All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be uploading a server.py file to the server that we have created on DigitalOcean. Now, if you don't know how to create a server or basically what is a server, I want you to go back to the section called basics of networking and have a look at a video called how to create a server or creating a server. So I'm going to be starting this video with the expectation that you have already created a server and you are on this kind of a page with the static IP address in front of you. Now this IP address is that of the server and it is static. That is, it's never going to change. So let's actually copy this IP address and we are going to paste this in a client.py file in place of this IP address. Now why do we need to change this IP address? Because this IP address is that of a local computer and it's private and it's going to be dynamic so it's always changing. So for example, let's say you are a hacker and you send this client.py file to a victim and for some reason you had to restart your computer. Now this client.py file is not going to be able to connect to your computer because this IP address will not remain the same. So that is why we have to change this IP address to that of a server. So let's paste it over here. The next thing that we need to do is actually upload this server.py file to our server. For that, I'm going to open up a tool called Putty. We also discussed this in the basics of networking section in the video titled as create a server. So I'll highly recommend if you don't know what I'm talking about to go to back to that video and have a look. But anyways, so what the next thing we are going to do is just copy this from over here and we are going to paste this over here and then I'm going to just load this new project. Okay, it changed the IP address. So I'm going to paste it again and the port will remain as 22. Now I'm just going to click on open and it's going to automatically connect to a server. It will first give a security alert. Just click on yes, it's fine. And then log in with the username of root, press enter. It's going to authenticate our RSA key that we created in the create a live server video. Anyways, now we are inside our terminal. That is we are inside our server. Now the only thing we have to do is actually upload our Python file over here. So instead of uploading, the easiest way to do is, is just create a new file and paste the contents of a server.py file in that Python file. So let's just check what is there in our server right now. We'll just click on ls. So our server is empty right now. So what we are going to do is we are going to use a command known as nano, which will basically create a new file. And I'm just going to call it server.py because that is what we are trying to create and press enter. So this will open up a new file. Now let's go back to our server.py file and I'm just going to copy this whole thing. Click on copy. And then I'm going to go back to my terminal and just right click over here. And it's going to paste all of the contents over here. Now, if you can see below, it says to write out is CTRLO. So that is what we are going to press on a computer. I'm just going to press CTRLO and it says file name to write. I want it to remain to server.py. So I'm just going to press enter. Now this file has been saved. So we just have to exit this terminal, which can be done using CTRLX. So I'm just going to press CTRLX on my computer and it's going to take us out from that file. Now to check whether this server.file actually has the content of a server.py or not, we are just going to write cat server.py and press enter and it should show us the contents of our file. So now we know that our file is there on server.py. Now that our server.py file is actually on the server, let's just type python3. And if you don't type in python3, if you just type in python, it's not going to execute the server.py file using python3 it's actually going to execute it using python2 but we want it to be executed using python3 so we have written python3 now after this we are just going to type in server.py and press enter and it says binding the port double line double line so our server.py file is actually working on our server now the only thing we have to do is actually run this client.py file now i'm going to be running it on my computer but if you want to test it out you can just paste this client file on your friend's computer or someone else's computer. And even if you want, you can just try it on your own computer because this is actually the server's computer and you can be sitting anywhere in this world and you'll be able to connect to that computer. So anyways, now I'm going to just run this client.py file. Now that we have run the client.py file, we have to go back to our server.py file and it says connection has been established. So now we know that our server.py and client.py files are working and a reverse shell is actually working. Now we need to see if actually we can do the, all the kind of crazy commands that you are you know, just using. So we'll just type in dir and see what happens over here. So on the client.py also it shows the directories, but it also shows you the directories over here. 
So now if we want, we can go to something like C. Let, let's type in, um, so we can go back our directory if we want. And it's going to go back our directory. Now all of this stuff is actually happening on my computer. And if you have pasted the client.py file onto your friend's computer, you can do, you can, you're basically controlling his computer from your server. Isn't that cool? So this is the capability of reverse shell. Now you can do all kind of crazy stuff like creating a directory, deleting a file. So for example, actually I'll show you, I'll give you an example. So I'm just going to go to my desktop and I'm going to go to my C folder. And there is this file called sys.ico, ICO. So I'm just going to delete this file. So let's open our putty up. So, and then we are going to just CD into our C drive. Okay, not this, we'll have to go one by one. Actually, I think that's, this is the command to go back to C, yeah. So now we, have, we are into the, your clients or your friends C drive. But I can just use the, I think it is remove directory command. I'm not sure, ICO. The directory name it's invalid um i don't really remember how to delete a file but actually we have a folder called hey so we'll just delete this hey folder and remove directory let's type in rmdir and click hey and press enter actually let me just go and see on how to delete a file on command prompt okay so it's deleted by using this delete command so i'm go going to go back to my server and just type in delete sys dot ICO. Let's actually open my C drive so we can actually see it happening and press enter. Could not find sys.ico. Actually, it's searching for icon. So let me just type it again. ICO. Press enter. And that file has been deleted from a computer. So this is the power of the reverse shell. You can create directories. Let me just actually create a directory. Uh, testing new. Uh, testing reverse shell press enter and this will actually create a new directory over here so guys uh, this is pretty much it for this video in the next section we are actually going to be trying out advanced tactics of uh, networking and socket programming so i'll see you over there and if you have any questions of how to use this or um, any kind of commands and stuff you can obviously post it in the discussion board and i'll help you out over there so anyways guys this is pretty much it for this video i'll see you in the next one